you know, there's many, many sheets, and they all look normal. It was like, oh, this is fantastic. And uh, and then I came to one, and it was the last one, as it turns out, and it would look very abnormal. And this particular PET scan had no orbital cortex activity. It had no temporal lobe activity. This whole sort of limbic system was not functioning. And I said, oh my God, this was one of these killers. It looked, it's the exact same pattern as a killer. But when I looked down at the code, it was not one of the killers, it was me. It was really a shock. It was a shock, but you know, I tried to make, you know, it was like, that's really interesting. No, I'm not in jail and I haven't killed anybody. I haven't done any of that stuff. So at least I don't have the genes. I don't have that, you know, I just have the brain pattern. I said, okay, I felt better. He then did the gene tests, looking not only for the warrior gene, but for other traits like impulsivity that make up the profile of a psychopath. Back came the results. And again, everybody had a mix of things in our family. It looked like an average sort of mix uh, of uh, these different genes that were have to do with aggression and all sorts of behaviors, uh, except now again, there was this one that showed all of these high risk genes and it was mine. It was like, what are the odds of getting these? To throw the dice 20 times and come up 6-6, six, 6-6, six, 6-6. Six, 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 six. You know, it's millions to one. Now Jim started asking himself some unsettling questions. This, you know, really became probably more serious in my mind because, you know, it's like, who, who am I, really? I mean, people with far less dangerous genetics uh, become killers and, and are psychopaths than what I had. You know, I had like almost all of them. He lives right up. Uh... But the reaction from his family was to unsettle him even further. I knew there was always something off. It makes more sense um, now that it's clear that he does have the brain and genetics of a psychopath. Uh, it all falls into place, as it were. Yep. He's got a hot head. Everything that you would want in a serial killer, he has in a, in a, in a fundamental way, because you know, I've, I've been scared of him a few times. The whole deal. Thanks, man. It was surprising, but it wasn't surprising, because he really is, in a way, two different people. Even though he's been always very funny and gregarious and everything else, he's always had a standoffish uh, part to him. And that's always been there. That's always been there. Who isn't here? So we'll drink the Shannon, who's yeah. not here. Having heard what his family thought, Jim felt forced to be honest with himself. Those are full pork things. I have characteristics or traits, some of which are, you know, in, in, that are psychopath, yeah. I could blow off an aunt's funeral if I thought there was a party that day. I would just take off. And that's not right. Uh, the thing is, I know that now, but I still don't care. And so I know it's, I know something's wrong, but I still don't care. And, uh, you know, the, so I don't know how else to put that. It's just, you're in a position where, oh, that's not right, and I don't give a shit. You know, that's, and that's the truth. But Jim still had a puzzle to solve. If he had the brain and the genes of a killer, why wasn't he one? The answer is that whether genes are triggered or not, will depend on what happens in your childhood. Simply having the warrior gene doesn't necessarily mean you'll be violent.